first of all, it's very clear that we need a balance between regulating um, conditions of change and promoting innovation and flexibility, and that is a very common theme. Um, the other thing that government can do is make sure that there are explicit protections for both providers and consumers. Um, this uh, transformation has the potential uh, to harm certain providers in a way that uh, would be harmful to the health of communities, I believe. Um, monitoring reporting um, obviously is a role that government can take on, and we do have the authority to collect most of the data that would be needed um, to do this. Um, there's lots of question about whether those who are currently on the margin should be supported in some way by government um, versus letting the market determine all outcomes. Um, but if we do that, how do we ensure essential services are delivered and how do we ensure the societal good? Some of you may have read in the newspaper a couple of weeks ago that uh, we, Massachusetts, got, just got approval from CMS to um, develop a strategy within our Medicaid program to actually pay uh, transitional payments during um, the transformation of this uh, payment system um, if we get to the point where we can implement it. Um, and I think that that is uh, great recognition on the part of CMS um, that you can't move providers from one form of payment to another form overnight and that, that it does take investment, not just in infrastructure, but in understanding um, if you achieve some of these outcomes, um, decreased admissions, decreased emergency visits, our revenue losses for some providers, um, and we need to acknowledge that. Um, I believe that uh, government should also support early adopters and help to report their experiences. We also believe that legislation is necessary to make sure um, that we have a mechanism to uh, measure the outcomes and make sure that um, access is not suffering, that quality is maintained and improved, uh, and that we are, in fact, containing cost. Uh, we also um, are looking at how to transform the whole system, not just um, uh, a new payment system, and believe that there should be attention paid to um, how far we get in uh, improving the systems of care and being able to measure uh, systemness, if you will. Uh, we do believe that there should be an oversight board, um, but do not believe that um, all of the outcomes or the policies um, of this board should be defined in legislation, but that the board should dis uh, determine um, these in specific. Uh, we believe there's legislation required for consumer protection and also to address antitrust, fraud and abuse, and physician self-referral issues that right now could get in the way for the formation of um, ACOs on one level, for example. Um, as I said, um, the board um, would set <laughs> parameters for ACOs while allowing flexibility and diversity. Um, we believe that ACO should be very diverse. Um, it could be a group of all primary care physicians. It could be a um, integrated delivery system. Um, but whatever, we believe that there need to be some baseline parameters for how ACOs function so that we don't wake up one morning and say, wow, uh, this is not what we anticipated uh, and this is not working. Um, there has to be a mechanism for ACOs to take payment and to determine how they should be distributed. One of the other things that needs to be addressed is um, how uh, the payments will be established in terms of risk adjustment. We also think there need to be explicit safeguards against underutilization and that uh, issues that have been on the table for a very long time but have not been adequately addressed such as um, how and who is going to pay for teaching? Um, what do we do with disproportionate share providers? Uh, what about providers who represent sole community status? What do we do about um, emergency departments, trauma units, and those types of things? Um, and what kind of services should be exempted from global payment? I think that's uh, particularly of interest to specialists. 
There are a lot of concerns that we're addressing. Um, so, for example, um, what is the current state of the healthcare community to deal with global payments? What is the core cost of making this transformation? Who, pay, who should pay for it? Um, what do we do um, as we redirect existing resources? Um, how will shifting risk from payers to providers be addressed? Um, we also want to know what the impact of global payments will have on consumers. Many people uh, understand that this uh, means that choice should be limited. Um, uh, how do we address this and how do we work with the uh, consumer community to um, make this work for them? Um, and lastly, how, what will the mechanism be to make sure that um, there are um, payments that are fair uh, and that will address the current limitations that we see in the system, including the disparities in payments um, between certain types of providers? As I read, actually, the Commission report, the major concern I have, among everything else, is the apparent centralization of medical care that's, that's sort of suggested in that report. I think that if you look at the report and look at some of the information uh, that uh, we are putting out, that others have put out since that report, um, there's been a, a, a growth, I think, in understanding some of these things. I would absolutely say that um, the board uh, is not viewed among those who have been discussing it seriously as um, sort of a centralized approach to managing health care or medicine. Um, it's really um, seen as an instrument to make sure that the payments are not disadvantaging providers or patients and uh, that we have the best opportunity to um, uh, control cost. In terms of uh, this being a universal approach, I think that um, I, for one, believe there has to be a lot of diversity, not only in the way um, the payment reform is done, but also in this definition of ACOs. Um, somebody, maybe Barbara, um, <coughs> talked about, you know, a practice of four docs is not ready to do this. Um, However, in certain parts of the states, there can be virtual relationships between groups of physicians who could be an ACO in the model that we have in mind um, and wouldn't need to uh, uh, join some big uh, organizational uh, contractual uh, entity in order to do it. So uh, diversity and flexibility is the theme I keep promoting, and I think the government's role is to let that um, continue and to be able to innovate.